True. You guys have probably worked with them or seen their work before. Lindsay and Brian, and I'm going to hand it over to them, and they're going to talk all about this great marketing program they have for everybody. And they'll be here after to ask, answer questions too. Right? Yeah, I'm yeah, okay. going to stick around for quite a bit afterwards okay. and and, um, and talk to you all. It gets warm in here, and I'll turn it Perfect. Get us all the way in here. So, how are you all doing today? Good. 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 So we're Brian and Lindsay Schlick, and um, we own a photography video company in Santa Clarita here. And we're here to talk to you about your visual marketing. So what we mean by that is all the photos and videos that you um, you put on your your website, your social media, you know, LinkedIn, everything like that. We want to show you how you can improve those and um, get them up to a level that matches your brand. So our goal today is to give you um, some suggested ideas for what you can do to make your visual marketing a little bit better and give you some tools, like some physical tools that you can use that don't actually cost you a lot of money and none of this stuff takes you a lot of time to do. So um, there's a little sign up sheet going around um, and if you fill that out we're, we're actually going to send you even more tips and tricks as um, the time goes after you've left here today so that's super useful if you want to sign up for that. Um, and then we have some... Um, like flyers and cards at the front here that we can talk to you about afterwards, okay? So, um, what is Schlick Art? So, we're a photo video company. We've been based in Valencia uh, since 2012, and we created this company because we, we know that nobody likes to be in front of a camera. We don't even like to be in front of a camera. We get it, like, don't, don't worry. We, we are right there with you. And what we were finding was a lot of, um, a lot of people were getting their professional portraits done and they were just like, you know, it's great, but my expression isn't correct, it doesn't really look like me, all of those things. So we wanted to create a company where when you walk out with the professional portraits or the video or whatever you, you create, you are like 100% confident putting that on your business card, giving it out to your clients and you felt like you and it matched your branding and you were moving forward. So that's how we created Schlickart and we do professional portraits, business videos, um, we shoot family portraiture in a studio, and we, we shoot a little boudoir as well, ladies, if any of you are interested in that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, another aspect of what we do that we feel is really important with um, visual marketing and visual branding is applying a storytelling element to, um, to your photography and to your um, video. You know, if you're just putting something out that doesn't match who you are and your story and your brand, it's not really cohesive with everything that you're doing. So that's really important to us is the storytelling element. Uh, so to start with, um, before we talk about any of the photography or video stuff that we're going to be talking about today, um, the most important thing um, to think about before you start putting your own photos and videos out there is to know why you're doing it in the first place. So before you go and record a video of you at a listing, or uh, in your office or anything like that, know what you're gonna be talking about before you start. Know why you're talking and have a reason why people should be watching this, or looking at this photo or, or watching this video that you're creating. So be really purposeful um, about what your content's gonna be before you begin. Um, and the next thing we're gonna talk about is, we're gonna kinda give you a couple definitions. Um, <coughs> Uh, we'll be, we're going to talk about the casual side of video, which is the kind of stuff that you guys, we're going to talk about today that you guys can create for yourself. And then the other side we're going to talk about is the professional videos. So to start with uh, casual video, uh, we like to kind of think of it as candid videos. It's stuff that you know, you're doing on your iPhone or whatever phone you have um, that is kind of off the cuff, uh, one take, raw footage, um, no editing, uh, no scene changes. <coughs> no music, no titles, it's kind of just off the cuff, you kind of adding some value to your clients by giving them some tip about how to um, maybe stage their home a little bit better or things like that. Um, they're really kind of short 30 to 90 second videos that you're just trying to make your point in a real uh, kind of quick fashion. So we'll give you an example of what one of those looks like and the example we're going to show you is uh, one that's been done really well uh, and we'll show it to you and then we'll kind of talk about why it's good, why it's a good example. I'm Allison Lindemann. I'm a digital marketing consultant and I've owned my business about, well, let's see, since 2004. Um, I'm in a pretty unique position to talk about Amanda Benson, who is a business consultant. I've known Amanda about eight years. I've worked with her the last several years. Some of the skills that I can tell you that Amanda possesses. 
So uh, the reason why we feel that's a great example of a casual video is you can tell she's not very well scripted. She's um, speaking kind of off the cuff. She had a couple ums and ahs and she had a couple mistakes. But the other things, um, and there was no kind of graphics or titles to cover it up and make it look pro super professional, but it's still a great example of her giving a testimonial for one of her power partners. Um, the other thing that you'll, you would have noticed is that the lighting was really good. Um, the shot was stable. Uh, the audio was really great. You could really hear what she was saying. Um, so that's, when we're talking about casual videos, that's the kind of stuff we're talking about, is make them look um, more towards the professional side instead of you walking around with the camera uh, constantly moving and kind of doing a selfie video, for lack of a better word. Uh, we're trying to get that style that we just showed you is what we're trying to get you towards today. Um, and then the next definition we're going to give you is the professional videos, and that's kind of where we step in. We show up with the big cameras, the big tripods, lights, professional microphones, um, and you know, either come to your office, or you come to us to film uh, your business videos, for lack of a better word. Uh, these are generally either scripted or very well thought out ahead of time, where you know we would sit down and kind of consult with you about what topics you're going to be talking about, uh, what B-roll footage is going to complement the things that you're talking about, so that when you kind of do make a mistake, we can cover that up with B-roll footage. It's going to include music and graphics and titles um, to kind of round out your brand to make the video fully match who you are and uh, the message that you're trying to portray. Uh, sometimes they can be scripted. Uh, we tend not to work that way, but if a script is called for, we can definitely do that as well. Um, and the videos are edited into like kind of a highly produced piece. Uh, so we'll show you an example of this uh, video that we did for Pool and Shaffery. Um, to kind of give you an example of what a professional video looks like. The teaching part of my job is probably my favorite part because I get to be in front of groups, not just in an auditorium like at the VIA presentation every year, but on a day-to-day -day basis. When I'm dealing across the table with a small business owner, I'm able to take very complex employment law issues and break them down into small bite-sized chunks. That allows a CEO or a business owner to really understand what the scope of their potential problems can be. My ability to break that information down and to make it accessible is one of my greatest strengths as an attorney. So uh, as you saw through that, there was titles and graphics and their logo that tied all that together. He was very well versed at what he was speaking about. The footage that we shot to complement what he was talking about went perfectly with it. The music, um, the effects, all that kind of stuff kind of rounded out to a very highly produced piece. So we just wanted to give you an idea of uh, the casual side of video, which we're gonna, we're gonna be talking about today with you guys, and the professional side, so we know the difference between the two. So with that said, um, you know, everybody struggles with video and quite often it gets you to a point where you actually just don't want to do it, right? You you right. avoid it at every, <laughs> every oh, chance oh, you get. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna literally give you some simple tricks to make these casual videos yourself. And with this kit and everything that we put together, it makes it so simple for you to just go out and do it. Um, so we like to call them, the reason why we call them casual videos and not candid videos is because nobody's candid about their business, right? You know, your business is everything to you. It's your blood, sweat, and tears. It's your branding. So we don't want to call them candid videos. We want to get, to get them a little, you know, a little bit better than that, a little bit more professional, but really easy and accessible for you all to use. So we're going to start off by talking about setting yourself up to success. We're going to split this video, casual video, into two sections setting yourself up for success and setting your shot up for success. So we're gonna start with you first and setting yourself up to su for success. Okay, so seriously, what are you wearing? Now, I joke about this because I see a lot of videos in yoga pants. I see a lot of videos Oh, I saw one the other week and I'm not even gonna mention what she was wearing. Um, but, you know, we see a lot of different, you know, outfits up and down very all over the place, and you're not like that with your branding. I'm sure you don't one minute go meet your clients and you're all dolled up to the nines, and then the next day you're just like, oh, I'm gonna go meet them in yoga pants because I'm so tired today. 
we want to try to avoid that as possible because that's really not your brand and that's really not how you should be meeting your clients. You should be consistent across the board. Now, if you are the yoga pant wearing realtor and this is your thing, you know, cute sunglasses, a daggy t-shirt and, and yoga pants and that's your thing and you go out and meet your clients, hey, all power to you. I mean, I personally wouldn't recommend it, but if that's your thing, go out and do it. But if, you know, you, you want to dress on your um, videos and your photography the same way that you would if you were meeting your clients. And the reason why is because you're still connecting with them, whether it's through social media or right in front of them. So really be intentional with what you're wearing. And a good, a good tip for that is to, um, if you're already out at a listing and you already got dressed up, just go there five minutes early and shoot that video. Or you know, wait until they leave and capture it then when the house already looks beautiful and staged and you've been intentional with that and you look great as well. And it's just like you know, killing two birds with one stone, okay? So, um, yeah, so think about your brand and think about how you, you know, how you dress for your brand, how you want to be, you know, moving forward and and use that in your photography and video, okay? And in the end, you know, a clean, consistent look is always, you know, probably the best option going forward. So, <laughs> now I'm going to talk about striking a pose. Now, anybody who's been photographed by me knows that posing for me is everything, okay? <laughs> Um, and I'm going to break this up into men and women in a second. Um, but first of all, just a few key roles that we're going to talk about. So as you can see how I'm standing here, anybody who knows me knows that I'm very animated and I speak really fast and sorry if I'm talking really fast right now, but I get very animated and I get really into what I'm doing. So I always try and find a signature pose that I can ground myself back to, okay? And for me, that's bringing my hands to center, very much speech pose. You know, if I'm on video, I'm not like going crazy, but then I'm just bringing myself back to center. I want to be myself. I don't want to pretend that I'm somebody else because people in the community recognize me for who I am. And so if I start being something that I'm not, it's not going to match my branding again. But what I'm just trying to do is bring it back to a central point where I found a central pose and I'm coming back to it, okay? And I'll split that up into different poses for men and women in a second. But think about it. Before you start your video, how do you want to look? How do you want to stand? Are you somebody who's very animated with their hands or are you not? And you have to kind of think about what you're doing, okay? So literally practice in a mirror. Get yourself to your place before you, you know, put yourself on that video. And, you know, again, I've said it before, be yourself and then just return back to that signature pose and then be yourself again, okay? So now we're gonna do this for the guys and I'm gonna make Andy come up here and be my volunteer. <laughs> come on, Andy. Please turn the camera off. Come on up here. So I photographed Andy so he knows that I have signature poses um, for guys over, over girls. So us girls, we like to always kick onto a hip and have a bit of shape. Guys can't do that. Andy, kick onto a hip for me. Push out to a hip. He's just like, yeah! This doesn't look good. Okay. So, so guys want to be very set up and down, very grounded, you know, on both feet. Put your hands in your pockets with your thumbs out for me. And this is a signature pose that is really great. What it does is if his hands are in the pocket with the thumb out, it anchors his hands. He can't go all the way in and start to look like this where his arms become part of his body, okay? It brings him out where he has, you can see his waistline. You can see the difference between his waist and his arms. Um, and it gives him nice round shoulders and it's a very attractive, grounded look for a guy. Another one would just be to bring your hands to center at the front here. Again, you get those nice round shoulders. He can gesture and return back to a position. Hands in the pockets, he can gesture and return back to the position. Some guys put their hands in the back pocket and make their point and then come back to it. But either way, it's a nice round shot. His arms are outside the body. It's more attractive for men to be very boxy, very straight up and down than it is for women. Thank you, Andy, I appreciate it. <laughs> just to add a little tip to that as well, is I love this look. If you're not wearing it, if you're wearing a suit, you know, wear that suit, rock it out, okay? I, you know, it's very professional and it, it looks like you're getting the job done. But if you're wearing a long sleeve shirt like this, roll your sleeves up just a little bit. It's a psychological um, thing for your, your viewers to see, oh my gosh, he's been busy this morning. He rolled up his sleeves and he's getting the work done. Yeah. So it's, it does look really good on camera for guys to have this rolled up sleeve look like we're getting it done today, okay? So now I'm gonna talk about posing for women and I'm gonna make Martha come up here. <laughs> 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 
Come on, I've done this to her twice now. She's like, don't pick me again, don't pick me again. <laughs> so, us women, if we stand very upside down, arms outside the body, we kind of look a little bit, and I hate the word, but dumpy. We compress through our abs, and we look very boxy. And, and women, we just don't look as good like that, do we? So kick onto a hip for me. Yes. So this is literally, I'm creating a zigzag, a zigzag, a zigzag um, pose with my body, and Martha is doing the same. Um, it's actually, um, if you think of old paintings from the 16th century, they've been doing this for centuries of like women in a zigzag pose because we look more feminine and we look more attractive when we're kicked onto a hip, okay? Bring yourself up to sweet pose and give me that little pose here and bring your hands together. <laughs> so women look better on that, on that zigzag in Italian. It's contrapposto. It literally means a woman's shape should be like this, okay? And, you know, she's bringing her hands to, to center and the hands are inside the body. Women either have to have their hands inside the body or all the way outside the body. Put those hands on the hips and give me a little attitude, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why, because if our hands are all the way outside the body, again, it's showing off our shape, right? Or we have to be all the way inside the body, which is where we like speech pose. Or when I ask you to bring your hand up and touch your decolletage right here, you can gesture and then you can come back and make your point. Or, you know, here at speech pose, again, you can gesture and come back and make your point. Thank you, honey. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then the last one I want to say about this for, for men and women, and if, again, if you've been photographed by me before, I say this over and over and over. I beat a dead horse with it, chin forward and down. So this is something that everybody makes a mistake on camera with. They've either read too much Vogue and they do this, hi everybody, I'm showing you my really big chin, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's because, especially with women, we read too many glamour magazines, we read too much Vogue, and this is literally what they do in Vogue, because it's editorial. Or we do this, and we get hella nasty double chin <laughs> underneath here, and we're like, hi everybody, <laughs> like this, okay? So, and so neither of those work. So it's literally called chin forward and down, and it's you pushing your forehead to the camera. Now, I like to keep the camera at eye level, and we're gonna talk more about this um, in, another, in a few minutes. But if the camera is at eye level, and I'm here, and I push my chin forward and down, I have a beautiful jawline, and my eyes are big and pretty, okay? I'm not here, and I'm not here. It feels a little weird to start with until you get used to it, but when you get used to it, you'll see it just looks really beautiful, and you feel like you're presenting yourself in the best way. So that works for both men and women. I say to everybody over and over again. So now we're gonna talk about a couple of sitting poses, okay? Oh my gosh. So I keep seeing a lot of real estate people sitting in front of their computer like this, okay? <laughs> and using the little camera on their computer to make videos, okay? And first of all, they're compressing their body, so all this kind of stuff happens down here. <laughs> but also, they're using the light from the computer screen as the lighting on their face. Well, that lighting is that na nasty blue lighting that we all hate when we go into changing rooms in stores, and we try something on and we're like, what the heck is wrong with the lighting in here? It's nasty, don't do it, because it's gonna be all over your face and it's not gonna make you look good, okay? If you are gonna do a sitting video, bring yourself to the front of your seat, especially women, cross one leg over the other. Men, ground yourself out, lean in, because again, then you're bringing your face and your chest you know, forward to the camera. And set up a um, system like this that we're gonna talk more about in a minute. And again, bring that camera down to eye level. And if women sit, oh well, men and women, if you sit on the front of your, your chair, it makes you lift up through your spine. It's very hard to do that compressive thing and feel comfortable there. But if you're all the way up, you can lean in, and again, you can make your presentation into your, into your camera instead of your computer screen, okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Yeah. So now that we know what you're supposed to look like when you're on camera, <laughs> what are you gonna say? <laughs> so what we're gonna say, we're gonna start, give you a couple tips to start with, and then we'll talk about scripting. So the tips that we're going to start with is before you start, I kind of mentioned it already, before you start, identify what your one key message is. And we say one key message because your videos, especially when you're creating these casual videos, um, you know, 30 to 90 seconds, you only have time to get one point out. And you want to make sure that that message is really clear. If you try to cover too many points within a video, you're going to go on and on and on and people are going to lose interest and stop watching your video. So we're going to try to keep them as short and concise as possible and to your point. So let your viewers get that information, take the value, and or finish watching it. Uh, the next thing we want to do 
it's kind of a weird one, but is to leave people with a warm and fuzzy feeling. And what that really means is to, let's make positive videos, let's not make negative videos. If you walk into a house that you're going to show and it's been decorated horribly, let's not point those things out and say like, what is this realtor doing? They, they are showing this house and the couch is horrible and this is horrible. Um, use it as an opportunity to, to talk about how you could positively impact that and decorate the house a little bit better. Show the house in a positive light. Um, don't talk about negative stuff. It's just, it's going to turn people off and show you as the negative uh, realtor. Uh, the next thing that, it doesn't work in every situation, but one of the things that we really love is to be able to tell a story within your video. Uh, the reason why that's a good one is because people, your viewers can relate to what you're talking about, they can put themselves in your in that person's shoes and go, oh, I've been in that situation before. I totally wish, you know, the point that they're trying to make in this video, I totally understand. Um, so stories really help if you can do that. Um, and now we'll talk about scripting. And when we talk about scripts, we don't talk, we're not talking about, I gotta write everything down that I wanna say word for word and then memorize it, because what you do there, if you do that is, um, it, it kind of flusters you and it makes you kind of think while you're talking about all the words that you missed and all the key things that you wanted to say. Um, when we talk about scripting, what we want to talk about is what we've done here is just bullet point things. So bullet point um, that you need to introduce yourself and name the company that you work for because that helps round out your branding. It puts a face to your name and it puts your face in, into that company, your company's name. And then the next thing you want to do is talk about where you are. If you're in the home smart building, if you're in your office, if you're at a listing, tell people so people can relate to where you are within your video so they can, you can talk about, they can understand where you are when you're talking, they're talking about what the point they're trying to make is. Then make your one key point like we've already talked about and then close with a call to action and a nice deed. Uh, and what that is, is um, people need to know how do they contact you. Do you want them to go to your website? Do you want them to email you? Should they text you? Should they call you? Um, figure out what you want to do before you start so they can uh, they can find out how to contact you and then end with a thank you for watching my video, have a nice weekend, have a great day, whatever it is that you normally do when you talk to people, close with that um, so it wraps it up nicely and people are left with a good positive feeling. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're not perfect in everyday life. You don't meet your clients and say everything perfect without ums and ahs in between. They know who you are. You know, they know that you know, you're a nice person and you're, you're helping them as much as possible. They already have decided whether they liked you or not, okay? So, you know, we messed up a couple of times here. I said zigzag, you know, I just carry on because it's real life and we're here. Why do we feel like on, on video, especially for casual video, that everything has to be exact and perfect? It's better that your lighting is set up and you're set up correctly and you're going out there and you're doing it. It's much more important to put a video out that's almost perfect, not perfect, they're not putting a video out at all, okay? Because then you are just not present on your social media. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about how to set up your system for success. So you know how to, what you should look like on camera, you know what you're gonna say now. We're gonna talk about how to set all this kind of stuff up to get you the best looking shot. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is, um, we have a couple pieces of paper and a couple of the aisles and we've got one up here too, um, is a QR code that leads to an Amazon uh, wish list. And what that does is it talks about all the, or it lists all the stuff that we have up here and a couple other extra items that we can get into in a bit. Um, so if you scan that QR code, it'll take you directly to that link. Uh, we make no money off this. It's literally the kit that we built for it's ourselves. It's just a cart in Amazon. Yeah, it's literally a pre-built cart for you. And you can pick and choose the items that you want to take from it. If you already have a tripod, then don't buy a tripod. Buy, buy the things that you need. Um, so we just wanted to make, sh make it super easy for you guys to find this stuff instead of having to go out and search for it yourself. Um, so the first thing we're going to talk about to kind of set your your phone and everything up for success is the tripod, the adjustable tripod. So that's the big triangular bit at the bottom that Lindsay has a hand on. Um, we really like this particular one uh, because it's adjustable. You can raise it up to about six and a half feet. So if you're taller, you can get it right into your eye line uh, perfectly. Or if you want to do the seated poses like Lindsay was talking about before, it'll go all the way down to reach whatever level you're at so that you can make sure that the camera or the phone's always at your eye line when you're speaking. Uh, the next thing on top of that is the uh, phone adapter, which is uh, holding the phone right now. It's, it's very similar to what you would find uh, you use in your car when you're doing using Google Maps for GPS and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it just helps stabilize the phone on top of the tripod. And then the next thing is pretty sweet. Uh, it's probably our favorite part of this is the Bluetooth remote. Uh, super important. 
because what this actually does is it gives you a little piece to put in your hand which you can hide in your hand when you're filming your video um, and it controls the start stop button so you can stand instead of doing the <laughs> instead of doing the very professional hit record and then run back to your spot so you can start recording your video <coughs> you can already be in place have the remote in your hand hide it away in your hand hit record and it'll start recording and then you can right stop there. it awesome right there. yeah and it's really inexpensive i think it's like 16 17 bucks yeah and it, it works for photos as well so yeah. you can set up this entire kit get yourself in front of your gorgeous house and just like quickly that. take a photo yeah. okay and get yourself into that beautiful position hide it into your hand and just click and click to if you if you QR code the link it's, it's that's in, in front of in you the, it's, in it's already in there for you and you can just move it to your cart and decide yeah yeah um, so the next thing that we uh, that we suggest that we don't actually have up here, but my friend right here in the front's already doing it. He's got a notepad and a pen. Super important so that when you <coughs> think of ideas for your videos or for photos that you want to do, but you're not quite ready to film them, you can jot down your ideas. Uh, it works the same way if you want to use your phone. I know a lot of people are technology driven, so you can store all those ideas in your phone. It just keeps a, a kind of a bank of ideas for you to go back to when you're like, oh, I need to do a video this week. You already have some ideas written out. That's really great as well. Like, cause I, I don't know whether you're like me, but I'll have a really great idea for a video, but I'm in my pajamas, okay? And I'd rather write down like 20 ideas in my pajamas and then, you know, get ready to go to your listing and then, oh, I've got five minutes before the client gets here, I can now bang this up one idea out and just do one idea at a time and just always have them. And then another thing that's also not up here but we think is really important as well as a, as a bag or a carrying case. And the idea is, with that is that we can throw all of this stuff into a bag and throw it in the trunk of your car so that when you're ready to film your video or shoot your photos, it's there ready for you. You can just pull it out and set it up and ready to go. You don't have to search for every little piece that's floating around in the back of your car or wherever you store it. Um, and then the, the last thing is a, is a bonus kind of item. We really like it, but we don't think it's necessary necessarily for everybody. But it's the uh, external mic that's plugged into the uh, phone jack. <laughs> Um, this is really great because it does really improve the audio of your videos. Um, but we always suggest to start without it, and if you like the quality of the audio that's, that you're doing in your videos, then use the internal one on the phone. Um, and this one in particular is for, the, I think we have a 6S, iPhone 6S, which has the headphone jack. If your phone doesn't have that, within that Amazon link, there is uh, microphones for camera or for phones that don't have that headphone jack. And they're little adapt adapter thing that you need for like the iPhone 8 and the iPhone um, X now, because you don't have the headphone jack. There's a little like extra adapter thing that's in there. Yeah, it's also in the cart. So, um, yeah. So those are the. That's kind of our kit. There's a couple of little extra things, the reflector and things like that. We'll, we'll kind of talk about in a little bit. Um, it's not a necessity. Um, but it can improve your, your videos and your photos in, in different ways if you, need you it, feel yeah. like you need it. Is that also uh, Samsung or Android? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. All, yeah. That stuff, all the stuff. All this stuff works with awesome. any kind of systems. And, and if you have questions about it afterwards, we can definitely point you in the right direction as to which one to buy from that Amazon card mm -hmm. awesome. um, that works for your phone. Um, okay, so we've got all that. Now we're going to talk about <coughs> lighting. So we've set our our kind of marketing kit up to get a, a great shot. You know what you're going to say. You know what you're going to look like. Now we got to think about what the light looks like. And this is super important because uh, we see tons and tons of videos where the lighting is not so great. Yep. And so I'm going to talk about that part first, and then Lindsay's going to correct me on talking about all the really good stuff that you should be doing with light. Uh, so the first thing, um, it, it's up there already for you, is don't stand with your back to the light. This gentleman did that. Um, his background looks amazing, but when he starts talking, you don't know who he is. You can't see his face. <laughs> Maybe he's a good looking guy that you want to see. I don't know. But, <laughs> um, but either way, the whole point of you doing videos is to get your face out there and to brand yourself and to, and to market yourself so that people trust you as the realtor to go to, right? right. So make sure people can see your face. Uh, the next thing that we want to say, we want to talk about is don't stand directly under the sun or directly under light. Um, if you're in a house and there's a fixture right above you, don't do that. If the sun's right above you, don't record because what it's going to do is going to leave cast very horrible shadows under your eyes, under your cheeks, things like that. It's going to make you not look great. I 
<laughs> in, in the other presentation, I said it's going to make you look like a horrible monster. That's probably not, <laughs> not true, but um, it's, it's not going to put you in the best light, so to speak. Um, and then the next light is strong sunlight, because what that does is it blows you out. Um, it makes your skin super bleached out, and it also makes you squint, uh, which isn't really an attractive look on camera. And I know some of you are like, oh, I can throw sunglasses on to block that light out so I don't squint. Um, you know, unless you're the sunglass wearing realtor, it's probably not the best look. You want to make sure that people see your face and understand who you are, because that's the whole point. That you're trying to brand yourself as the as the realtor to go to, right? Uh, so now Lindsay's going to talk about all the things that you should do with light. So lighting is somebody, something that I find a lot of people really just don't get, and so they don't try. Okay, um, it's. It's quite often not the easiest thing to fathom, but if you bear with me here, I think I can get you to a place where you're like, oh, I think I can get this enough to, to get myself a good example of what I need, okay? So Brian talked about not standing in direct sunlight hitting you in the face, right? Because again, you're gonna get bleached out and you'll have to wear sunglasses and part of your face will be lit, part of it won't, and there'll be really harsh shadows and it's not gonna look good, okay? So imagine that you're in a kitchen in one of the houses that you're, you're showing and you know there's a beautiful big window over here and then you've got all these gorgeous appliances behind you that you can stage and make everything really really pretty okay what i'm finding is a lot of realtors are doing this and then having that shadowy problem where you know they look silhouetted and they're showing the window versus showing the kitchen because a lot of realtor videos they're also um have the camera up here and they're the only thing in the frame not the gorgeous kitchen behind them but if they turn around and now they have that gorgeous window in front of them and the gorgeous kitchen behind and they widen the shot a little bit to show a little bit more of them then they're going to get you know a gorgeous display of kitchen and with the window coming in yes you will get this gorgeous light coming through the window but because of the window you can see that the sun isn't right here and hitting me in the face right now it's higher in the sky and it's creating beautiful light coming through the window and what i mean by that is if the sun was here and it was creating a pool of light on the floor and you stood in that pool of light you're going to get that horrible lighting right but if you stand just outside the shadowy area so the pool of light is hitting the floor and you're in the line of shadow do you get where, mm -hmm. what i'm saying mm -hmm. that light is going to bounce up and smack you in the face okay and it's called a natural reflector okay so the ground can be a natural reflector cement can be a natural reflector a light colored garage door can be a natural reflector and you can bounce this gorgeous sunlight off of it and then it hits you and it's this gorgeous natural reflector if you've ever shot in my studio you'll see that i you know have the window off to the side and on this side i have a big white board bouncing that beautiful light off to I'm hitting him back in the face and look how beautiful I'm lit over here as well because that natural reflector is hit, hitting back I shot um Cheryl a few mornings ago well about a month ago two months yeah. ago now um, and we I, sh I do these cityscape shots outside first thing in the morning because the sun bounce, bounces down and hits the ground and bounces up back on her and her skin just looks stunning because it's all natural reflectors bouncing up so you're basically bouncing light off something to then you know hit you back and make you look really pretty so that light can come through the window make you look really great you have the camera exactly how andy's camera is right now you know so there's the beautiful window i have this gorgeous kitchen behind and i've got really nice lighting on my face from the shadowy window light does that make sense yes okay yes. so that's how we want to we want to do that <laughs> and look around and think about those natural reflectors next time you're at a house you're like oh if i stand here there's a really nice light i can get a really good picture of myself but if i stand over here the sun is coming down and hitting me and half of my face is lit and half isn't okay another thing you can do to is add a reflector to your kit now this is in that little marketing kit on the amazon cart as well just i think it's a ten dollar reflector and you can take this with you and get yourself a little stand and take that out if you're struggling to find natural reflectors in the ground or you don't think it's working you can just add that to your kit as well okay so now that we've talked about lighting we're going to talk about composition and framing your shot so we've said it you know time and time again I really, really like the camera to be at eye level. And then, because what happens is, if your camera is all the way up here and you're like, hi, you get a massive forehead. I really, really hate whoever, whichever photographer told 14 year old girls to do selfies like this. Like, cause yeah, okay, you have a jawline and you have a massive forehead. Your face still isn't, you know, the right composition for, for what it is. 
So we always wanna bring that camera down to that eye level again. And what did I say before? Chin forward and down, okay? Because then the biggest feature in your shot is what? Your eyes. And what do you wanna do? You wanna connect with your clients. And the only way to do that is through your eyes, okay? So you always wanna get that composition so that the shot is at eye level, okay? Another thing I do, because I'm very handsy and I like to you know, be animated in my videos, is I don't shoot videos where it's just my tiny little head. And the reason why is because I'm still down here being animated <laughs> and I look like I'm shaking in the video because all you can see is my shoulders and my head. Again, I see it all the time, okay? So I frame my shot and I bring myself out to about here. And the reason why is I can have a beautiful like kitchen or a beautiful space behind me. So I've got something going on in the background. And if I talk, I can come back to my hand position. I'm kicking my hip out and I can make my point. Now, the other thing I do there, can you see it says horizontal, leave enough space for an apple above the head. What I find in a lot of videos is a lot of people will be like this. Hi, I'm a tiny <laughs> little head and all this space is around, right? So I always try to imagine that I could sit an apple above my head when I'm framing the shot because then I'll look really good, my hands are still in the shot and I have a beautiful background that I can display, okay? So for video, I prefer horizontal or if you're on Instagram, it'll be square, okay? But I never really shoot video vertically anymore. It is in 2003, we're not using one of those flip video phone, uh, flip video machines that they used to have back then. We're shooting real professional video or casual video for your clients. So let's get it to the best that, we can, that it can be, which is horizontal or square for Instagram, okay? And the reason why I put the vertical shot in is for photography. And we're gonna talk more about photography in a little bit. But if you're flipping to a vertical shot to take photographs, then you wanna imagine there's a pineapple above the head. Do you, do you get what I'm saying with that? Mm -hmm. So apple above the head, pineapple above the head. Keep the hands in the shot, frame yourself well, so that you stand in front of the camera and you can really make a good presentation for your clients, okay? So here's a couple more examples of really great composition that you can think about. Maybe a bit more for photography than for video. So I love the shot of Ryan on the far right hand side because he was showcasing this gorgeous house, you know, one of his better houses that he was selling. We got up very early in the morning and we took this shot. So the house is lit beautifully and he's lit beautifully. And all I did, again, there's no flash here. I didn't do anything crazy. I just used natural reflexes to bounce the morning light back onto him and back onto the house, okay? And again, it's composed with him in the bottom of the shot looking great, very grounded. And then the, um, the beautiful house in the background. So think about your composition. It's not just you being a tiny head going, hi, I'm at a listing today. I don't mean to sound funny, but nobody cares. They wanna see the listing, you know? Like they love you, but what have you got to show them today? You know? So think about what you're actually putting in the frame, okay? And then one of the things I wanna say about that photo as well is, what we talked about at the beginning, right, is to know what you're doing, what like the content that you want to portray when you before you put it out there. He really thought about this. He wanted to show off a house that represents the type of houses that he sells. So he wants to be known for selling big, beautiful houses like that. So he wanted photos in front of it. Think about that before you take your photos. Do you want to be known for? Uh, um, and I'm not disparaging this. Uh, you know, known for selling mobile homes maybe don't take photos in front of those. Like take, if you want big, beautiful homes to sell, take photos in front of big, beautiful homes. Because it represents, it shows people that that's what you do, and that's what your, your mission is, to help people. Think through the shot before you start. And then the one in the top right hand corner here of, um, of Jim Danton, he's a local fitness trainer out here. So the one thing I love about this shot is he's cut off to the side. He's doing that very grounded shot, sitting forward. This is how you could sit if you were gonna do sitting videos for men. But also for the photo, there's enough dead space for, at the side that he can start putting memes in, you know, for social media. So using like apps like, is it Word Swag and, and what have you, Canva, he can have his message like, yeah, Canva, things like that. He can have his message. I believe HomeSmart has a version of Canva that, Canva, that yeah, yeah, exactly. So that, that you can put in the side and make your own little advertisements every week. We know that you can't afford to have a professional photographer walk around photographing you and creating graphics for you weekly. These are little things that you can do for yourself and put your logo in the side of the picture using things like Canva and Word, Word Swag. And then same at the bottom. You know, Peter thought about the way he was sitting in front of um, the bar at Newhall Refinery because we really wanted to showcase the bar and you know the beautiful taps that we have. 
but he's, you know, the person of authority in the shot. So think about how you're composing things before you, before you start. And, you know, we talked about being yourself in, in a shot. Look at how Peter sat. Peter isn't like sat there, you know, worrying about being completely perfectly upright because that is Peter, okay? That is who he is. When you meet him, he's just a very happy-go-lucky kind of hipster dude, and that's how he sits and talks to people. So he's being himself, but he still looks very professional and a person of authority in his pictures, okay? Okay. So now we know how to uh, look on camera, what we just say on camera how to compose the shot before you start going. So we're gonna tell you how to now set your phone up for success. Uh, so we'll go through a couple um, maybe do's and don'ts for the settings you're gonna have on your phone um, before you start filming. So the first one we're gonna start with is a don't. Um, uh, you can't do it in, in what we call selfie mode, but you can do it in <coughs> regular camera mode if you're shooting with the, the outside camera. It's uh, it's called digital zoom, and Lindsay's kind of demonstrating it now. It's basically where you kind of pinch the screen so you can zoom in on the image. Um, we don't like this at all because what it does is it degrades the image. It, yes, it gets you zoomed in on the thing that you want to show, but it degrades the image. It makes it pixelated and it makes everything look not so great. Uh, what we want to do instead is physically move yourself. We talked about how to get into the correct lighting. Um, physically move your setup and move yourself so that you're in the correct lighting so you don't have to zoom or, um, you know, to get that image or that subject into the frame. You know, physically move the camera to move the setup. Uh, the other thing that we want to avoid is the exposure lock. This is a little bit uh, more uh, difficult to explain, I guess, but it's when you press and hold on the screen to lock the lighting to one specific lighting setup. Um, we don't like this because if the lighting changes, or you move around you, or you move to a different position, um, it's going to hold that lighting setup for that entire time. So if you move to a different lighting setup, it could make it darker, it could make it too bright. Uh, we just want to avoid using that all together. Another thing to do instead is think about all the lighting techniques yeah. that you just learned. Get yourself into the right lighting, and you yeah. won't need to do an exposure lock. Yeah. You'll be able. You're in the right lighting. You're already going to look good to begin with. Okay. And then uh, on the phones these days, autofocus. It's amazing. Um, some, we were talking to somebody else about it, and she's like, well, how do I turn autofocus on? The great thing about it, it's already on when you start your camera. Um, you, if you're in the back, you might not be able to see it, but generally what it does, it, it puts a square around Lindsay's face as she moves around. And we, <coughs> and we love it for that reason. If you move around a little bit in your videos, the square is going to follow you and always keep you in focus, and that's the main point. We want to keep your face in focus um, because you're the authority in the video. You're connecting with your clients. Um, and then the mic, whether or not you're using the external mic or the internal mic of the, of the phone, we want to make sure that you're as close to it as possible so that we get the best sound as possible. Um, the closer you are, the better it's going to sound. And the, one, the other thing we'll talk about when it comes to the audio is before you start filming, think about your surroundings. Listen to what is going on around you. If there's sirens going on, probably don't film. If there's traffic <laughs> happening, don't film. Uh, if there's a playground across the street and kids are playing and shouting, probably don't film. Uh, also, inside a house, listen to refrigerator noises, loud air conditioning, dogs <laughs> barking, all that kind of stuff before you film. And if those things are happening, move to a different location or just say, today's not the right day to film, I'm going to find a different place to go. Film. Or just wait 10 minutes. You yeah, know, maybe, sirens yeah, go sirens away go after five minutes. Kids go back into school after break. You know, things like that. Just wait 10 minutes and, and make the video. And again, you because you want it to be professional and you want it to match your brand. Okay, so now we've gone through all the video stuff, we're going to talk about photography and the great thing about the photography side of things, it's very similar to video. So I'm not going to beat a dead horse here and go back over the same issues as with video. I'm just going to reiterate a couple of points so that you know that, you know, how the same rules apply. So again, go back and be intentional with your appearance and think about what you're wearing before you start taking photographs. Um, I also want to point out that um, I say this to a lot of my clients when they come into a studio. Solid colors are better than patterns when taking photographs of yourself. If you're wearing too many patterns, they distract from the face. And the whole point of what you're doing is, you know, you're taking a photograph of yourself. You know, think about what you're wearing. So solid colors, I, you know, I take this with a pinch of salt. Like you're wearing a polka dot skirt. I think that's wonderful. I don't think that distracts from the face. I don't want you to bring me paisley. Do you know what I mean? Or you know, a big floral, you know, top because you're gonna, you're not really like, 
it's about you. It's not about, hey, I'm wearing this fashion item today. You know, again, your client doesn't care about that. They're either here to see you or the house that you're selling, okay? So be intentional with your appearance and think about what you're doing. And then fitted is always better than baggy as well, especially for women, like big flowy tops on camera, they, they don't sit right, you know, a little bit more fitted and it just looks better on camera, okay? Same with like a fitted suit or a fitted shirt, okay? Um, Remember those rules of lighting, they still apply, you know, bounce off the bounce light off that natural reflector so it looks beautiful on your face when you're taking the shot. Walk around and look around the house and see where the beautiful light is. Put your camera up and literally walk around and go, oh, there it is. Okay, I can see where the light is falling now before you actually take, take the shot. And then, you know, take that time to frame your shot. We talked about, you know, the vertical, the, the pineapple above the head, and then a horizontal shot, the apple above the head, so you're not a tiny little head in the bottom of the frame with all this dead space. Think about those things when you're um, setting up your frame. Maybe you wanna be off to one side so that you can show the beautiful house in the background, or maybe you, know, you want a dead space to one side purposefully so that you can write memes in there. You know, think about the why of what you're doing before you actually go out and just go, I'm just gonna take a selfie right now. You know, things like that. And so, also think about your posing when you're taking your photos because it's super important to not just thing. be, like she was saying, in the chair slumped over or whatever. Make sure that you are presenting yourself in, in the best light to your clients. Yeah, girls kick on to that one hip. Guys standing up very grounded and it'll, it'll look great. Guys, hands outside the body. Girls, arms inside the body. <coughs> you know, doing, I can give you a million different poses like just here uh, or arms all the way outside the body. Show your shape. It really, really works. No matter how big or small anybody is, if you're showing off your shape and you're stood in the right position, you're gonna put your best face forward, okay? So, selfies. Now, everybody loves a good selfie, right? <laughs> I truly do believe that there is a place for selfies in your visual branding, I do. I do prefer this setup for when you're getting gorgeous houses in the background or when you're creating videos because it does look more professional. But I do think that there is a place for the candid selfie. Whether it's you, you know, you and your team have just, you know, had a really great month and you want to do a team shot together and wrap your arms around you. It's like a big hug and it looks really, you know, friendly and loving and you know warm and fuzzy for your clients. And your clients, trust me, they love warm and fuzzy. Okay? So there is a place for a selfie. But again, it has to be done right, okay? So please don't do this. Please stop. Everybody just stop doing selfies like this. Like, trust me, you're going to look through all your old selfies and you're going to be like, oh my God, giant forehead, giant forehead. Okay? <laughs> you're going to notice it now. <laughs> okay? You can see the girls in the picture are doing it perfectly. They have the camera, not the phone. We're not looking at the screen. We're looking at where the camera is. They have the camera at eye level. And then you can see, chin forward and down. It's perfect. Yeah, you can see how perfect their, their eyes are the, the largest thing coming towards the camera. Okay, so they're thinking about the eye line of their screen. They're thinking about chin forward and down. And, you know, if you want to move yourself off to the side again, you can put those memes in. If it's just the two of you and you want to, you know, do a team shot. Or maybe you want to do a key shot with your clients, you know, with the house in the background and really get yourself into place so you can see the house in the background. Just be intentional again with your selfies. And yeah, eye level, chin forward and down. And look at the camera, not the screen. Remember I keep talking about connection and connecting with your clients? If you look at the screen when taking selfies, you're not looking at the lens. So therefore you're not going to connect with your clients. So just remember to look at where the actual camera lens is versus the screen, okay? So, okay, so that was a lot, and there's a lot of skills there. We know there's a lot of skills there, and we can sit and talk to you after the presentation about all that. But now you have all these skills, and if you, if you signed up for that uh, newsletter that's going around, there's a little sign-in sheet. If you sign up for that, you know, we're gonna keep giving you these skills as, as you go, okay? So, but now that you have all those skills, we're gonna talk about, really, how can you apply these skills? You know, how do they apply to you and how can you really you know, start using them in the best fashion? <laughs> so let's break it down into the marketing tips. You really need to start doing casual content weekly, monthly, if you can handle that, even quarterly. Photography and video are not going anywhere. Okay, you know, we're gonna be into 2019 soon and like social media is run by visuals. Um, Nobody wants to call up five different realtors these days and interview them all individually, okay? 
They want to be able to stalk you online, okay? <clears throat> Nobody has the time to call you all up and have an interview with each individual realty and go, I think I'm gonna go with this one. Mm -hmm. It's also very awkward in this day and age. People don't like picking up the phone. People don't like going to tons and tons of meetings to pick their realty, real set. They want <laughs> to go online and you know, hear you speak, figure out who you are and if they like you before they meet you and choose you, okay? So with that said, you know, it says 59% of consumers would rather watch a video than before purchasing, okay? And then, you know, our brains process text, uh, process visuals 60,000 times more than text. So you can write all the email newsletters that you want, you can write all the blog posts that you want, but if you're missing that video element, if you're missing that photo element, there's a problem there, okay? Because we would much rather see <coughs> videos and photos than read text, and that's why Instagram exists, right? Okay, so think about that. So start adding this casual content in weekly, monthly, quarterly, whatever you can handle. If you can only handle quarterly, only handle quarterly, let's get you started. If you are still like, oh my God, Lindsay, that was a lot of information and you're struggling with this, we can help you with it. And we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. But the next one down is your professional videos, okay? Your casual videos have no place on your website. I'm sorry, they are for social media. They're for your blogs, they're for your newsletters, they're not for your website. Your website is a professional piece of artwork, for lack of a better place, it's your home. Right? It's where your clients come to see you being professional. So if you're gonna put video and photography on your website, it should be professional, right? It should match across the board. They don't wanna see silly little funny videos on, their, on your website. They wanna see real cohesive, how can I help you professional videos. And we're gonna talk about that in a second as well. So you have the videos that you can make yourself weekly, monthly, and you have the videos that you can create professionally or the photos that you can create professionally, the professional portraits, and we're going to talk about both sides of this now. Okay, so we just wanted to bring this slide back up to recap. What we talked about today is the casual side, what we're, you know, the, the 90 second, 30 to 90 second videos, the off the cuff, you know, make your point and kind of be done with it to, to get it all out there and add value to what you're doing on a regular basis to add value to your clients. The professional videos, again, is where we show up, uh, big cameras, um, scripting, well thought out. Uh, we've met with you a few times to make sure that we're all on the same page and we're customizing videos to what your brand is and what you are trying to do professionally. They're fully edited, uh, highly produced uh, music, titles, graphics, so it rounds out your branding for you. We just wanted to bring this slide back up to kind of define the two different uh, sides. The casual is what we talked about with you guys today, and the professional is where we kind of step in and really help you guys uh, round out your website and that professional side of what you do. So with that said, let's lay a foundation. So even ourselves, Schlickart as a business, we have a photo video foundation on our um, Dropbox account, okay? I like using Dropbox or Google Drive or something like that to hold all my foundation together because I can access it from any device no matter where I am, okay? So we have a, a little folder on our Dropbox. We actually call it the beautiful folder. And in, in it, it has lots of different photography and video pieces, professional and casual. And we just keep that as a home of where we can access those things whenever we need them. Whether we wanna put a new professional video on our website, whether we want to put a new professional portrait on our email signature or business card or what have you, or whether we want to you know, collect a bunch of our casual videos together and post them weekly and you know, start getting them out there. And we can do this like, you know, quite often I'll be meeting for somebody for lunch and I'll be like, oh, I haven't posted anything today. Oh, I have that video that I made you know, last week. Let's put that out. And I can do it from anywhere. So you should definitely have a foundation for your visual media and in a place that you can access from anywhere, okay? So let's talk about that a little bit. Professional headshots or professional portraits, these aren't what we're talking about, those selfies or you know, setting up the camera and you just doing casual photography you know, at home. You should still be doing those for your weekly social media, but everybody needs a, basically a platform of professional portraits that they can use for their business card, for their uh, newsletters, for their email signatures, the About Us page on your website, you know, Professional portraits in real estate are really important and really key to your branding. That you, you know, you took yourself seriously enough to go out there and actually get a professional portrait for, you know, 
for your brand, okay? So the great thing about that is we, you can come to us and we have a professional portrait package, for lack of a better word. We have a session fee. If you just need one professional portrait and you wanna use it on everything, we can do that for you. I don't necessarily recommend that because you have so many different uh, places that you can put a professional portrait. And every time you put a professional portrait out, you get 200 likes. Ask Andy, you know, ask Martha, you know, you remember when you did yours and you were just like, it, it, it posted and what, what did you get? How many comments and likes did you get from your professional portrait? Like 150 likes and like, I don't even know how many comments. And the reason why that's good, it's not like, oh, I got likes, great, everybody loves it. <laughs> what it does is it re-reminds people that you're there. Every time you post a new image, you're re-reminding your clients that you're there and they're like, oh, I've been meaning to call you, I'm ready to sell my house, okay? It's that, those little pulses of putting you out there. So we recommend you know, coming in, doing a bunch of different wardrobe changes, doing different looks, different posing, trying out different things, and then choosing you know, a bank of different shots that you can keep and use throughout all of your social media, your, um, especially for your website and business card and for your email signatures and things like that, okay? So that's something we can help you with. Then you have the website videos. Now these are the professional videos that we were talking about. These should not be candid videos on your website. You really want three to five professional videos where your clients can come and see why you do what you do, okay? So let's start off with the introductory homepage. So the first page that anybody goes, uh, um, goes to your website, the first page that comes up, there should be a video on there of you introducing yourself. Who are you and what do you do and how can you help me? Okay, they don't want to know, oh, well, I went to Saugus High, and then I did this, and, and you know, I worked for Starbucks for a while. They don't care. They want to know how you, how, how you can help them. They want to know who you are and then how you can help them. And there's a professional element to that, to actually, you know, getting that out and nailing it and actually have a piece of branding there. Okay, and then you have the About Us page. Now, literally, they'll click to your About Us page to see who you are. Do they want to use you or do your blogs down the street? Okay, and if Joe blogs down the street has a great video saying the why he wants to be a realtor and why he wants to help you today, it's going to be you know he's going to win if you just have you know written down hi my name is Tracy and I'm a realtor in Santa Clarita and I used to be a barista and this that and the other it's not the same thing okay whereas a video saying the why you are here today and why you are helping somebody and why they should choose you over that other person is going to win out every single time. Partly because they also get to speak to you directly without actually speaking to you directly, okay? And then the third one that I loved for websites especially is a services video. We know you don't just buy and sell, sell houses, right? There is so many million different things in between there that you also do for your clients. We bought our house back in November, and I could not believe the million little things that our realtor did for us. I was blown away that she was gonna go out of her way to do all these things. Now, you might do that, and then another realtor might not. So you can have a services video on your website explaining all the different things that you are gonna do to, for your client to go above and beyond, and why they should choose you over the other person, okay? So that's three little professional videos that we can help you with, and we can hone that out and what that looks like for your branding. And then we come back to these casual videos that we've just explained to you today how you can do them yourself. These you really need to start doing weekly, monthly, quarterly. If you can't handle weekly and monthly, start doing them quarterly, but start doing them because it's better to have a video that you're a little nervous about out there than no video at all, okay? And if, you know, you can use this for all sorts of different things, testimonials, you know, how to stage a house, little tips on how to stage a house, little tips on what's going on in the market right now. Especially, I love this for young people, actually. I hear a lot of real, real estate people who are young say to me, well, I'm not taken seriously as much as somebody who's older, or I feel like I'm being looked at that I'm not being taken seriously as somebody else. I actually don't believe that's true. I think that's a little bit in your own head, but I totally get where you're coming from. Well, this is somewhere where you can get ahead of the game because you're more likely to be willing to do a video than an, an older realtor, you know? So you can go out there and you can be a person of authority, especially if you've got your facts straight and you're really pushing, you know, pushing details out. You can actually 
people will start going, wow, she really knows her stuff. She really knows what she's doing. I'm going to go with her. So you can use those casual videos to do promotions, FAQs, little tips and tricks. You know, meet your team. You could do a video on each of the team members once a week. Just put a new person up and say, this person's on our team and this is what would they do to help you. All of those things. Now, if you're still struggling with this, and you're like, okay, I get what you're saying, you're absolutely right, but I can't do this. Like, this is just so hard for me to do. We do offer another service where we will come and train you and set this up for you and do this. Now, I can do this myself and we can let you go and you go on your way, okay? <laughs> so these are three different services that we're talking about today. And with that said, first of all, I want to say thank you all for coming today. Oh, I you. hope this was like... <laughs> I talk really fast, right? <laughs> but, um, so I hope this was really, really helpful. And for you guys in the room for being here today, we actually have a, a couple of different promotions that can help you. We don't do sales very often. We don't like we don't really offer sales or promotions, but because we wanted to do this, you know, I Mike and Martha, thank you so much for having us and thank you for letting us us be here today. And so for that we wanted to offer you guys a bunch of promotions. And I'm gonna have Brian talk about the video promotion first and then I'll talk about the headshot. So we just talked about how there's two different video services that we can help you with, the professional side and the casual side. We do the same thing, we wanna learn about you, we wanna learn about your business, we wanna know what your brand is all about so we can customize videos specifically for you. Um, and then once we do the consultation, we would choose an actual filming date and for video, we have uh, five filming dates left in 2018. So we'd have to book a date within uh, 2018 to make it happen. Um, but yeah, like we, we'd really love to help you out and get, get your videos um, up to par make you guys get you off on the right foot so we also have a professional portrait um, promotion today so if you come and have a professional portrait session with us basically you come to our home studio and we run you through a gamut of different posing and then we sit down together and choose the perfect shots for what you're looking for for your brand okay so we actually have a professional portrait session fee usually um, which is just your time in the studio which is a hundred dollars and then we price out per shot or for package after that well, what we're doing today is completely waiving that $100 session fee. So there will be no session fee. You can come and try us out and not have to, um, you know, there's no obligation. You can come and just try our services and try our professional portrait session and then choose the shots after that and purchase whatever you wish to purchase. It's a no obligation session. I am running <coughs> this uh, promotion all the way through to the end of September. Um, I have spots starting mid-July right now, all the way through the end of September that I can get you booked in for, and you will get that special no session fee, $100 off um, for booking that in today. And we're gonna stick around after the session, take any questions that you have, because we know that was a lot of information, um, and book anybody in who's interested in either the consultations for video or the professional portraits, we can we can do that today. Or if you have questions about what we talked about, um, how to set all this stuff up, we're more than happy to answer questions about that as well. So feel free to come talk to us afterwards. So thank you again, and thank, thank you, you, Martha, and I know Mike's not here.